Oops. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they caught me. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Friday. And <laughs> you caught me pinching my cheeks to look rosy them up. What what was that? That's do again to make you younger. younger. Um, it's Friday, so uh, and it's it's eleven o'clock. So it's time for art journal um, demoing and um, talk about demoing. I took down my shelves yesterday because they were falling down, and uh, I had too much on them, believe it or not. And so. Um, Excuse the blank space behind me. It will be filled up as soon as I get the shelves, the replacement shelves I've ordered uh, in the store. Um, today I'm going to be working with a couple things. One, I'm not working in my big journal today, and I'm doing that very intentionally. Um, I realize that I don't want to set this idea that you have to have something special uh, or special supplies or special um, materials to do this. And so I'm just going to uh, show you I've got these... Um, composition books that were hanging around my studio at home and I brought one of them in to work in. It's a, it is a composition uh, book size. It happens to be a Heidi Swap one because I'm, you know, I'm addicted to journals. So of course I have every journal I've ever seen. Uh, you know, I, I, I buy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just realizing I need to make sure I, you guys can see it. Um, and then, so, uh, but you could also use the 89 cent composition journal you get at um, the uh, craft supplies or the, the office supply store at Target or Walmart, wherever it is you get your um, daily stuff. Uh, I guarantee, pretty well guarantee that almost all of you have something like this in a drawer somewhere in your house. Maybe it's full of old shopping lists, even better, if you ask me, that sort of thing where you come in and you you, you muck on top of it and, and uh, process with your color and your texture. So I'm just gonna work today straight into this. Another thing that happened when I did all my renovating yesterday is I found my sidekick. So I'm gonna be sidekicking into this. So just a reminder, a sidekick is the journal that I keep to my side so that I can use it as a palette for my brayer. I can, it's a place to you know wipe off that extra paint I have from my um, paintbrush or my squeegee. Um, sometimes I like what happens on the sidekick page better than what's going on in my journal. Um, and so, you know, sometimes I end up with something, it's just there was an extra piece that I glued down. Uh, yeah, so it can make me super happy to see what's happening. Um, yeah, I love this page. It's why it's it's uh, paper clip shut so we don't uber on, goober on top of it. So I'm gonna work, just open that up and leave it open for me to work with. All right, so I'm gonna start today. I do have my Bicky, Bicky Boat Boot, Boaten? Booten. <laughs> Not boat, boot. Booten. Yes, boo. Booten. Oh, it might very well be, yes. Bouton. Um, I'm going to use her texture paste today as well. And you know what? With all my movie stuff around. My cart of uh, stencils. There's the stencils I've been using the last few days. And so those will definitely be in there somewhere. I'm debating whether or not to pull a, a set of the gel pens that she sells and pull, just play with those. But anyway, go I'll just, what do you think? Should we try them? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So I'm starting... I just I'm gonna use my sidekick as a palette and I'm gonna load up my um, brayer I'm okay with it being a little splotchy because that's part of what's cool okay, it's last one. Oh my goodness okay thank you all right I might be reordering this stuff I don't often reorder sets but um, it looks like we might be down down a to the point where people might want still to buy it, and so I need to bring them back in. Okay, so these are the Vicky Booten um, gel, let's see, they're called gel crayons. And so it's interesting, they're more, when you say gel, part of me thinks they're gonna be transparent. Oh, they are a little transparent, you can see that. And they, they're very glidey. And I'm wondering if they're- soluble in the 
Do they say they're, they are water soluble? So let's see what happens when we soluble them. There we go, look at that. They, ooh, that's kind of cool. See what happened? I went, oh, that's more paint that's on here. <laughs> Layering it in with some paint and smearing it around a little bit because it got wet. That's kind of fun. Let's see. So this is, you know, first layers. It's gonna come in and scribble. Not writing anything in particular. So the way these work is these are like a marker. You can, um, or a, one of those crayons where you just roll it to extend they it more. Like crayons? They, they, you know those, they, for a while there they were making crayons that were in little plastic and you had to turn, twist mm -hmm. the bottom in order to get them to go up. That's the way these are made. Um, I wouldn't call them crayons. They, they're they slicker, so they're going down a little like a gelato. And, uh, ooh, look, you can blend it. So yeah, I would say they're very smooth gelato. They remind me a little of the um, Distress crayons, Tim Holtz's Distress crayons. Let's see. Some of my paints, oop, that had some in it, are a little, on the dry side. Or empty, I should say. Not dry, empty. Okay, so so far I haven't added any textures. It's just color and color and crayons. this particular journal and if you guys are I can bring this in this is Heidi Swap she has a whole series um, these fit into these little uh, journal binder books that she has so as you fill them you can then put them in these binders and they just the binders have these uh, um, metal slats that you slide it around it's a little like a, a metal version of a travel journal which is kind of interesting so let's see I'm gonna throw down some texture. That's what I do. Um, just reach behind me and grab. This is my own personal texture paste. Can't remember what I called this. If I called it anything, I might not have. This might be one of my rejects for whatever reason. But look at that. Um, that texture. It's sort of a frosting y. Um, is that the Vicky Booten stencil? This is the Vicky Booten stencil. It comes in that three set that I opened the other day. Looks cool. I like how it's expressing itself. So you guys uh, know that I don't, you know, when you've just plunked a stencil down, I usually like to come in and um, distress the edges a little bit so that it looks a little less like I've just plunked it and a little more like the texture's pulling out of something. So there's some modification of that. Um, this is light molding paste from Golden that I have tinted with my own color um, combination. And I'm gonna get it super crispy dry because I wanna use these crayons again and I want it to, I wanna be able to skate over the texture without smushing it. So I'm gonna take a second and really, really make sure you get your money's worth in terms of paying to watch paint dry with me today. Not that you're paying anything, but tip time. Time, time is money. I hope so. Uh, I'm hoping that, yeah, I have a delivery notice of like three, four different boxes from Notions and they haven't shown up yet, so I'm hoping they come in time for me to run and get them. Okay. 
I do have the stuff that's sitting next to you on the table. Mm -hmm. I have a couple things to show people, but I'm really, I really wanted to open the notions boxes because they're just full of fun stuff. on and see what happens. So you can see it is a little translucent. So I add a little drag a little bit. Actually I love how it sort of it softened the pink into the texture. That actually I like that. You let me know if they can't see what I'm doing, right? You know, if I just pull the camera forward a little bit, then maybe it's not such an issue. There we go. So I can, I, I'm wondering if you can see what happened. Um, so I, I rubbed the crayon over the top of the texture and, um, and then moistened it and it's sort of melding into that texture and it's picking up some details and I, I love what's happening with it actually. It looks really cool. And then I feel like I could come in, add some color on the sides here and, uh, extend that look out a little bit. So it's acting a little bit like distress paints in terms of if you get that water on it right away, it you know dissipates and dissolves into the um, into the paper. This is uh, her uh, Vicky's texture paste that come in that kit. Um, I'm gonna throw some of this down. Nice thick opaque colors to that. Lois likes to blow dry her hair while you're um, <laughs> so she has, she's, she's in sync with you. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, to my point about the sidekick, here we go. I'm gonna spread that down in there because I had some extra that I didn't want to put on my page. Um, so I've got a little pop going on there. That's fun. I don't think I've seen a, a you know, I have this sort of bright pink in a lot of um, different brands, but this one is very opaque and very um, intense on the page. This one now with a different color. Ooh, yeah. I like this stencil a lot, it's really cute. <laughs> All right, well, there's the whole theory of threes, the feng shui of putting things down in threes. Um, but once you know the rules, you can always break them. So there's me putting down four splotches of texture paste. I am, I'm feeling a little bit oppositional. <laughs> uh, feels like lots of rules coming down the pipe. I don't know if, hopefully you've all heard that the mask mandate is back which makes it easier for me to be honest as a business owner. I don't have to, you know, make my case anymore, but uh, they do want us wearing masks inside. So it might change how long some of my classes are because I was building up to longer classes, but if we have to wear masks the whole time, 
that might change things for people. So let's see. That yellow, these colors are fun. Yeah. Sitting on top of that brayering I did. Let's see what happens if I bring some of that color back in. Got a little bit of wet color on my my sidekicks and I come in and see what happens if I add yeah I just dulled that down that's all right and this muddied so I'm going to dry it up bring some more of this yellow in, but I'm going to do it with this um, deco art, I think anyway, if it opens. Um, this is the deco art paint in cadmium yellow. Yeah. Cadmium yellow is a uh, art paint color. So I'm just gonna do that thing where I scrape it down and what's gonna do is in some places it will highlight the texture and some places it will uh, obscure it, but just bringing more of that yellow in. I actually really like that. I get the two sides, so. Cool beans, covered up a little more white space there. Come back with that neon yellow again and the same texture. Um, stencil. You can see how some of these layers start piling on each other and adding um, dimension. She like this motif a lot. So, you know, it's a little smaller. It's not as much space to have to cover up. Some of my stencils, you know, would completely cover the page if I were using my bigger ones. So if you find the really big journals a little overwhelming, this might be a good choice for you. That's what happens when I throw this purple down. Okay. 
Now what I really like about this texture paste is how opaque it is. The color really seems to hold even when you dry it. Nice, nice suck in the face effect going on. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw down some of this blue. See what happens. Fill in some of these white spaces, and then add some water. Let that soften up a little bit. happens if I add some here and just smear with my finger yeah I like it I like what happens when you add the water and it solidifies a little bit so someone asked me yesterday about the gel crayons uh, whether or not they dry which is a very good question Let's see if I can answer that. Yeah, it looks like once they're dry, they're dry. So that's good. Maybe if you put them down and left them, they'd need a little while to cure, but it looks to me like they dry pretty well. All right, so I have this original color, this orange that I used. I'm gonna reestablish some of that and then um, Um, I just want to point out when you put down texture you can scrape it on and then scrape some of it off and get sort of a translucent window pane effect or you can put it on fairly thick and really cover up stuff so So I really liked how that worked earlier, where I blew, uh, put this pink down on top of the texture face. So I'm gonna do it again, see if I can't get that same effect of the pink outlining the orange a little bit, sort of. Mm, this corner's been a little neglected, so I think I'm gonna come in 
do another round of this. This time I'm going to use this pink. This is Saki and the Eye Pink. Look at that. Bam. Kaplooey. So this is where I'm doing the thing where I get a really thin layer of paint or texture paste and I just drag it across the texture and it just ever so slightly highlights. Like it's very much. That, uh, that would be Courtney turning on the computer in the other okay. way. Yeah. All right, well. This is making, making me go a little cross-eyed, to be honest, this color combination, so. Get some crusty bits. Where I didn't let it dry, and so it dried the skin, and then I scraped the skin off with the next layer. It really does look like skin though. Ugh, yuck. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do something a little different. Um I am going to dab some little black dress onto this one. And I'm dabbing because um, I want it to be a very specific look. So I'm gonna use a sponge that I don't mind. This one's been seen better days. So I'm just gonna <laughs> that did not work. Contrast, and I almost never put black on my work. Never, unless it's doodling later. <laughs> this does not want to express itself. This is what happens sometimes when you have a fine detail and um, a lot of texture that it doesn't want to, you know, the, the stencil can't lie flat enough on the um, surface for it to expose itself. So let's see what happens if I just come in. So this is me clawing back some of the texture, the texture that's underneath some of these layers. If I just brush it carefully with a little sponge, some ink, I can maybe bring that back out. Find those textural places. happening for me on this one okay if you don't like it you're not finished so I'm gonna go ahead and um, hopefully this won't upset any slash many of you this is little black dress that I'm working with and uh, I'm gonna brayer it on and there there's that texture Pull some of that out. Mm 
and of course completely changed changes what's going on on the page now everything has got this veil of black over it it has pushed everything down a layer and coalesced into one look and so uh, where I go from here will be on top of all of that and will express itself um, you know if I go with a little more contrast it'll sit on top of all of that and uh, all this busyness and will float into the background but you know hopefully you can see how doing that pulled out a lot of texture and pulled the two sides together as one and I like it better than I did. So I'm gonna just see what happens if I throw some of this down. Some glitter? Glitter? I thought you said glitter. <laughs> some I'm of this excited. down. I haven't done glitter in a while, it's true. I might have some glitter behind me. Just reached behind me and pulled this out. This is glitter, a little eye zinc. It's a little on the dry side. Is that little bit coming out? Let's see what happens if I. Hmm. I think that's too dark for this. You know, this is. I also have this 24 karat version, which is um, holographic. That can be fun to throw down. Is it an eye zinc one? Yep. So I have two eye zinc glitter products. They're, um, they're both diamond, but the 24 karat one is holographic. And the other one is just glitter. Even if I'm not getting stellar results. Oh, there's a cool diamond kit on online. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I have those in stock now. You can get these as sets. Yeah. So I'm giving the whole page a little bit of a sheen. I'm adding this in the quantities that I am. I don't know if you can see that, it's... All right. That that might be me for today. Oh, so this one doesn't have a, ca a cap because um, the cap got compromised and so I just snipped it off. So in order to close it, I'm just gonna squeeze this really tight and leave it to dry and it will form its own little crust over it. All right, so, <laughs> not sure how this looks through the lens of the, the live, but, um, I like what that brought to it. I can see the sort of green sheen that it's um, pulled on. I don't know if you can see how glittery it is and the holographic side of it, but I think I might call it good for today. And uh, maybe I'll circle back and maybe not. Maybe this will be it. Um, honestly, 
things a little are a little uh, chaotic in my life right now, so this this might just be representative of that. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all good energy for the most part. It's the you know, life stuff, um, life stuff, and shelves falling down, which meant that I finally pulled the trigger on buying the ones I want for behind me in the first place that I've been wanting for a while. Anyway, so uh, yes, I probably do have things to show you at once. I hope you come back and check that out. And um, I have spaces in my class, my. Um, the, the shrine class tomorrow. I have two spaces left. So um, I hope that uh, that you come in in some way or another over the next couple days and then I see you here. All right. Stay well, everyone. Bye.